Well, hello, hello. Uh, we are uh, continuing in exploring this amazing living kingdom of God. It lives on the inside. The kingdom of God is in your midst, inside of you. And the soul of the Son of God, the heir of the kingdom, is the one that learns how to deal with all this amazing, powerful, living kingdom. What's the main principal thing? Relationships. Relationship. It's the love that comes from the head, Jesus, into the body into the kingdom of God. This relationship, it's so powerful. That's why we are not just talking about an intellectual faith, but relationship with faith. It's not like just have faith, hey, have faith. You don't have enough faith. Believe, believe. It's, it's not just that. It's a relationship of love to faith created for a certain purpose by the Father to the Word. And you as heir of the kingdom are to understand and relate to this living kingdom. How awesome! How beautiful! How powerful! It's all this that the Lord is pouring inside you right now as you listen to this talked about the fear of the lord how oh how powerful how deep is the work of the fear of the lord a spirit of counsel purpose is established by counsel talked about might oh, how how great Remember the Kratos, the immense, beyond any reason, power of the Almighty. The potential power to manifest through might. We talked about rest. What, what we, I didn't touch on, I started in talking about spiritual things, said that how, um, how the world and you know, how the human soul is trying to imitate, to replace things of God, of the Spirit, the fear of the Lord, replaced with the fear of punishment, fear of evil. Not hating evil, but fear of evil. See how, how that comes to our soul. That's not, that's in religion, there's so much fear of punishment. But that's not the fear of God. And the counsel, it's the mind of man, all this psyche understanding and trying to figure from the tree of knowledge. The might is all this powerful weapons and army and atomic things and all this um, air force stuff and it, that's just the power of flesh it's a power of men the power of god is way beyond that remember we said that one angel Angel of the Lord came in one enemy's camp and he, I think it killed one night over a hundred thousand enemies. Over a hundred thousand. One angel. And then rest and of course the all kind of things that human mind can um, come up with to um, counterfeit counterfeit the spirit of rest so really want to make sure that you understand we are born of the spirit and we are tapping into our resources 
are the spiritual realm, the realm of God, way beyond this creation, way beyond the energy of the sun and the electromagnetic and way beyond that. It's the spiritual energy, the Kratos of the living God, the eternal life, the Zoe life of God. It's a resource. It's so important to know the difference as we're going to talk a little bit about and I left them towards the end because we we find a lot of word and it's lots of talk about wisdom understanding and knowledge <clears throat> but it's 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 so important to know that words of wisdom are coming from wisdom Sometimes you are in a situation where you cannot answer yes, you cannot answer no, you cannot go ahead, but you cannot stay back. And wisdom speaks to you and you find yourself or you hear yourself saying some words. You are amazed yourself what came out of your mouth. And that's, those are the words of wisdom. Wisdom just spoke through that vessel right there it's such a special relationship with wisdom we don't use the wisdom of men the wisdom of this world as huge as it seems to be and as ready to um, explain things and come up with all kind of philosophy and uh, proverbs and things that seem to be right. The wisdom of ancient, ancient people and we are not going by the wisdom of the world. Because the world in its wisdom could not know God. Could not. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians. Therefore God saved the world by the foolishness of the cross. By preaching that God came in the body of a man to die on the cross. That's foolishness. It's impossible. All the wisdom of the world. Remember how he says the, the wise of this age. The wisdom of this age could not figure out is he gonna die on that cross? Really? <clears throat> had they known the true wisdom of God, they would not have crucified Jesus. But they cannot know. And this wisdom of God is what works inside you. That's our inheritance, the wisdom of God. I love when I look at the wisdom of God how above any type of um, wisdom, even innovation of this world, it's way above that. And remember in the Old Testament, I call them the spiritual artisans, the ones that were given wisdom to build, to do things. In, in a way that is so perfect. Exodus 28.3 So you shall speak to all who are gifted artisans. I love that. Whom, you know why they are that? Not because they were born with inclination to paint or to draw. And he says, the ones whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. And you're saying, why? To make the largest, the tallest building in the world? To just 
create some type of architecture that's so out of this world? Why? Why did he fail them with this wisdom that they may make Aaron's garments? <laughs> Don't you love your Lord? There is so much wisdom in every thread that made that garment. Do you think he's threading your life with less wisdom? Do you think he just throws some things in there and some people from the left and circumcise? It's like just, yeah, just live this life and one day I'll see in heaven. No! There is so much wisdom in what's happening with your life. He's knitting together here and there. If he failed those gifted artisans to make Aaron's garments, I think he's using less wisdom to build the body of Christ, to prepare the garment of the bride, to help her be ready and dressed for the wedding? You think it's less wisdom? No way! <laughs> it's so much of God's wisdom that's used in knitting together all these things. Look in Exodus 31 3, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship. I can see this guy, Betzalel, or I'm not sure how the name is pronounced, how he came to work every morning after eating the manna saying bye to his family and coming to work and wisdom on this understanding on this side and knowledge just fell them and this way of using the hands and the tools in all manner of workmanship to build something you know, Moses would come and give him the vision, said that's how this room should look like. And he would come and bring it together. This, the spirits of the Lord would work with his mind and would bring this together, the vision that God gave him, gave Moses on the mountain. Do everything as I showed you on the mountain. We are the artisans of the Lord. We are the workmanship and we build the workmanship. We work with all kind of gifts and gifted. Wisdom is with us. Understanding is with us. Knowledge is with us building the body of Christ. It's not according to what the news say, or what the world says, what the book says. It's coming straight from the kingdom of God. That's so beautiful. Also, there is so much that wisdom worked in the spiritual leadership. There's so many books and people that can train in leadership there is nothing like the spirit of wisdom. Listen, and you, Ezra, Ezra 7.25, according to your God-given wisdom, set magistrates and judges who may judge all the people who are in the region and teach those who do not know the laws of your God. According to to the God-given wisdom. First King 4.29, of course, Solomon. And God gave Solomon 
wisdom and exceedingly great understanding and largeness of heart like the sand on the seashore. What a work, what a ministry that wisdom was doing to Solomon's mind, was speaking with him. I can see him coming to a blank slate sometimes. It's like, we want to do this. And the needs were there and coming right there and working with wisdom. You know what? You are going to do this and you are going to do this. And we'll name some people that will cut the stones and some other people will cut the wood. All this work of wisdom. Proverbs 1, 3, to receive instruction of wisdom. That's what happened. Justice, judgment, and equity. Even more than that. Yes, I'm so excited about the works of wisdom. Something I call the continuous creation. Why? Psalm 136, 5. To him who by wisdom made the heavens. By wisdom made the heavens. See, it doesn't say that he was wise and he designed this. He said, by wisdom made the heavens. This is praising the Lord that by wisdom he made the heavens. Proverbs 3.19, the Lord by wisdom, again, founded the earth. And by understanding, he established the heavens. That place where it says founded, it's like laid the foundation. That means the rules of creation are laid by wisdom. Wisdom lays foundation and foundational rules of life. Rules of life laid by wisdom. Proverbs 24, 3, through wisdom a house is built and by understanding it is established. We'll go and try to apply this and exercise this, but I'm challenging you. Be open for the counsel of wisdom. Do not lean on your own understanding. There is own understanding, experiences of the past, what people say, what you Google, what you find on the internet. But it's always His wisdom, His understanding. What a special relationship that I'm calling you to start if you don't know about it. Listen, it says here, Proverbs 7, 4, Say to wisdom, say to wisdom, right now, say to wisdom, you are my sister and call understanding your nearest kin. Say to wisdom, you are my sister. I love you, wisdom. I love you, wisdom. You are building, you are laying foundational principles in my life, in everything that my Lord wants me to build. While I'm on this earth, I'm, I'm a builder, sometimes a master builder. But that's because I'm a wise master builder. I'm working with wisdom to build. Proverbs 8.12 I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. Wisdom wants to speak to you. 
Proverbs 8.14, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. <laughs> can you hear it? Yes, you can. Absolutely, you can. Proverbs 4.7, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Let's think about this. Wisdom is what lays the foundation. Let's say you are in a ministry or you're going to start a ministry. You're going to serve the Lord. He's directing you in something. It's wisdom. That's going to show you how to lay the foundation. Maybe the main thing in the ministry is being a new creation. That's how you talk to people, that's how you record things, that's how you minister to people, that's uh, how you pray for people. Being a new creation. It's a principle, it's a foundational principle. Or maybe the ministry that you are building is absolutely, without doubt, believing the Word of God. And this is how wisdom is laying the foundation right there. You understand? This is, this is how it's doing it. Or maybe the ministry is to multiply the oneness. The oneness that you have with the Lord as He lives inside you, you multiply in others. He's showing and He's laying the foundation. Or maybe you, you are in a business or you want to go in a different business, you want to start a business. The principles of life, the foundation of life is laid by wisdom, talking to wisdom. How do I do? What do you want me to do here? And it's going to show you. Maybe is having a vision of the kingdom of God on earth. How to touch any places and different things of business on earth from the kingdom of God mentality. The mind of Christ in the business. And that's the principle. Wisdom will show you this. Or um, maybe a family. You are starting a family. Or you really want to raise a family on the foundation that God wants to build. Remember, by wisdom, you build a house. You build your own house by wisdom. And wisdom will show you the foundational principles. Maybe what wisdom is showing you for your family is to see Jesus in every member of your family. And this is a principle of life. No matter how uh, personalities uh, are different and uh, diversity and different things, you look to build up, edify Jesus in each member of the family. This is what wisdom shows you. That's the foundation of your house. Or could be raising sons of God in your house, in your family. Focusing in everything you do, maybe from the cooking, uh, from um, going to work, cleaning the house, spending time with your kids, everything, with, with your spouse, your kids, everything is raising sons, people, new creations that know who they are to their Father. Wisdom is the principal thing. So in everything, 
get wisdom. Amen.